Hello, in this video is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling General Linear Models 1. And today we're going to look at simple linear regression and put it in matrix notation. Because when we go into multiple linear regression, matrix notation is really the, the best way to handle the theory of what we're going to do. So first of all, scalar notation, and that's what I've been using so far. We just say yi is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 xi plus epsilon i. i equal 1 to n. And what this really means is that for each person or each observation, they, they, they get their own equation. So observation 1 is y1 is equal to this. y2 is equal to this. Notice it's x2 and air 2, you know, epsilon 2 all the way to n. So yn is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 xn plus epsilon n. And what we want to do is have a better way to handle this. Okay, and we're going to introduce matrix notation. But think of this, you know, as the equal sign. So you, you can we can kind of maybe quarantine these off. And this plus, these are the air terms. So we'll, so we'll write those, uh, you know, to the side. And and then and we'll deal with the middle. So if we, if you kind of think of like that, we, we're going to group them. So we have each equation here, as we do up here, but they're grouped. So we have the y, or the dependent variable, the response variable. We have the air term, and then we have all this junk in the middle. Well, there's a lot of repeats here, the betas, the beta ones. And so what we're going to do is... We're going to take this matrix. Oh, that's a that's a good question. Are these matrices or vectors? Um, well, a vector is a matrix, so that's kind of uh, maybe a silly question. So, the you know, if it only has one column, it's called a vector, and if it has multiple columns, it's called a matrix. Even though a vector is a matrix, so this is a matrix of the air. I mean, a vector of the air terms. This is a vector of the y terms and this is actually a vector right because this is a number this is a number this is a number so this is one column so it's a vector but we're going to take this and write it into this so we have one column of ones and one column of you know the independent variable x1 x2 all the way to xn and then we have we take the parameters beta 0 and beta 1 so when you matrix multiply this, you know, it, it does that. So it's, you know, it's 1 times this plus x1 times beta 1, which is we get this one back. And here, you know, we take the second row times this, we get this back. And now, now this is a matrix. It's in rows and two columns. This is a vector again. This is a vector. So we just generically write it like this, y, x, beta, plus epsilon, where... The little vector sign means it's a, you know. And so you can represent all of this notation very compactly into this. Now the standard assumptions using matrix notation or, or vector notation is the expected value of this epsilon vector is the zero vector. And that means that it's zero in each component here, right? The expected value. Standard assumption two is that you, uh, the variance of each epsilon is constant. It's a sigma squared. Here it says the covariances between any two uh, error terms is zero. And so you write it like this. The, vec the variance of this error vector, the epsilon vector, is sigma squared i. And i is the identity matrix with i is down the diagonal. Now the normal assumption just simply becomes this. The Vector of error terms is is uh, normally distributed, so it'd be multivariate normally distributed, with the mean vector of zero and variance covariance matrix sigma squared i. So we're going to do some matrix manipulations. We're going to show that um, this uh, vector beta hat represented like this is the least squares estimate for beta. So, and as a reminder, beta vector was this, and the least squares estimate, beta hat, means it's beta 0 hat and beta 1 hat. And in previous videos, we it was this. So, you know, beta 1 hat was 
um, of course beta one hat and this and this was y minus beta one hat x bar or if you wanted to write it in in this form where x s x y and s x x were defined previously but we'll cover it below see a previous video on the playlist so as a reminder x it has a column of ones and a column of the x's one two three through n so then this x transpose x is we, we take the transpose of this and that's what this matrix is and then of course this is x so when you do matrix multiply it's the first row first column and that is this so it's one times one one times one plus you know add it all together you get in and then this times this row you get the sum of the xi's this times this you get the sum of the xi's this times this you get the sum of the xi squares now let's find the determinant of this so this matrix is this and we want the determinant so the determinant is this times that minus that times that and we get this so now we can manipulate this if we uh, if we divide by n squared multiply by n squared then we can change this to x bar quantity squared but then we have an n squared out front but an n common we can factor it out and we get this well this piece right here is what we call SXX right so the determinant is this and why do we want the determinant because we want to take the inverse so if we take the inverse of this matrix so this matrix is this right and the determinant was this well the and it, since it's a two by two matrix the inverse is one over the determinant you switch these two positions and you add a negative and this is the inverse okay now some notes if we look at this first piece which is this times this right we add and subtract the same so we're adding zero but then this piece right here is SXX, and we have minus, and then now we can divide it and we get this. So that's this first piece of the, uh, this next one is this, and the N can go in under the sum and make that X bar. And for this piece, it's just simply one over SXX. So that means the inverse can be represented like this. Well, now, following the, the calculations, we need to calculate x bar or x transpose y. So this is x transpose, and this is our y vector. So you take this row times this column, you get the sum of the xi's. This row times this, you get the sum of the xi um, times y. Now, to put it all together, we calculated this, which was this matrix. This was this matrix. So now, to calculate this, it's it's this row times this column. So you take this piece times this piece, added to this times this, and that's what this is, right? So this times that is y bar, and then this times this is is this piece, and then minus which you know plus the, this times with the minus comes out front so it's this times this right and then this is that times that which is this now we can simplify that we have y bar we have um, an x bar common in both of these terms so we can factor it out and then I, I, uh, I switch since I factor out a minus x bar I put this term first so it's the sum of the xi, xi yi and then this is the xi or yi x bar it's all over sxx right it's a common denominator and the same thing here i put this term first and then minus that then uh, this right here is the sum of the yi right you could cuz same index same sum from 1 to n we can kind of make it one sum and then we can factor out a yi and we're left with xi minus x bar right and down here we do the same but this this t 
top piece is what we were calling SXY this sum right here SXY and the same thing that's SXY but this right here when we you go back in one of the videos and look at the least squares estimates for beta 0 and beta 1 that's exactly what they are so this is beta 0 hat and this is beta 1 hat right so that is the least squares estimate of our beta estimates now let's show that the variance of our beta hat or least variance of the least squares estimates <coughs> is this now as a reminder the variance of a vector so that's the variance of beta 0 hat beta 1 hat that's you think of it as this is the variance of beta 1 that component the next diagonal is the variance of beta 1 hat and the off diagonal is the covariance between the two right? and in one of my videos we derived these the properties of the least squares estimates so the variance of beta 1 hat was this the covariance was this sigma squared minus x bar over s x x the variance of beta 1 hat was this but notice that there's a sigma squared common so we can factor it out and then what's left over is actually what we calculated up there it's the inverse of x transpose x and so that shows that the variance can be represented like this well, that's all I have for today. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Um, the next video, we're going to look at maximum likelihood estimation in simple linear regression. Um, so, like the video, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.